I'm going to show you how you can call a C-sharp function library from within a BizTalk orchestration. So here I've created a C-sharp DLL, basically, class library. I called it BizTalk function library. I gave it a namespace of biztalk.training.com and the class name is common function library because it could actually be called by other C-sharp programs, not just BizTalk. And there are two ways you can call C-sharp. One with a variable where you actually have an object. But here, if I make all my methods static, I can call it without having to use an intermediate variable. So there are, for instance, here's one thing I, I, I uh, might want to do. Let me give you a common example here. Okay, here's an index of function. So I'm going to open the orchestration to show you that many of the string functions are actually not even available in a BizTalk orchestration. So here we are back in our orchestration. I'm going to make a string variable. Let's just call it uh, uh, vpionum. And we'll give it a type of string. And then here in our shape that we've been doing expressions, I want to say vpo num equals vpo oops vpo num dot and actually I do see the string functions here this uh, this may have been something they actually added in R2. So let's say here, I want the index, uh, not index of, I want to do a substring. So I want the first three characters, zero for length of three. Well, I'm about 90% sure that didn't work in former releases of BizTalk, uh, like BizTalk 2004. I'm running BizTalk 2006 R2 right now. And just to see if that compiles, let's do a build and it actually compiled. So that was actually kind of a surprise to me, but let me just show you the other way to do it. Here I could say, I want to call my function library. So to call my function library, I need to make a reference to it. So I would say here, add reference. Uh, the easiest way to do it would be actually add my, my DLL to this library. So I'll say add existing project, and then I'll grab the BizTalk function library and pull it in here. Now before we run this, any function library that's a C-sharp, that's not BizTalk, it'll have to be put into the GAC before you can actually call it and run it at runtime. So now we're going to go back to the orchestration here, right click add reference, then we'll go to the project and add the BTS function library and click OK. So now here I could say equals and then I'm going to put the name of the library, which is biztalk.training.com dot the name of the library dot and then here are all the different routines that are available. Uh, another reason I've written these routines is that uh, I like to use the business rule system sometimes and with the business rules uh, sometimes they don't even have something simple like a concatenation function. So we actually wrote uh, concat 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so we can concatenate two or three fields together from within the business rules. And uh, basically all the simple string functions I've carried over here. So if I want to do a substring, that there it is, and then now I have basically I followed the same pattern except, sorry some of this is going off the screen, so if I actually uh, you can even split this on a line, which is kind of interesting. So there you can see now the full parameters. So first I pass the string, which would be vpo num. And then I pass the start index, which is 0, and the length, which is 3. So there's two different ways I could get the first three digits of the purchase order number. One is using the regular string function, and the second one is by calling the function library. And right here you see that little red, that's because I actually have a lowercase p there. So this is how you can call a function library, um, but since we don't need to do it for the substring, let's talk about another function I have here. So we have dot write string to file. 
Now, basically, this could be a poor man's uh, debugger. So if I say right here, write to file, I can give it a file name. So let's make the file name a variable. Let's call it a v trace file name. Boolean depend would be true. And here is my like hello world. And I could say uh, x equals plus x. So basically what I'm doing is I'm writing out some of the intermediate values here. So we don't want divide by 0 anymore. So we're going to say y is 50, 50 divided by 3, just for example. And we haven't defined trace file name yet, so it's underlined in red. And I want to write to that trace file the words hello world x equals whatever. So we need to define this variable. Go to orchestration view, variables, add new variable, give it the name, and make it a string. Now we need to give that string a value, and here we have an initial value. And I'll show you a trick here. Um, once upon a time, I accidentally just put a value here, like that, and then I did a compile. And I want to show you what happens. So I'm going to do a build, and then we're going to go look at the compile errors. And the first one says the expression you have entered is not valid. That's very misleading, and it tells you line 307. And of course, you have no idea where line 307 is. Oftentimes, when you click on these, it will take you to some line of code. Um, well, actually, this one may be, that may be a legitimate error. So here I put system.convert.toString. In regular C Sharp, usually you can concatenate uh, variables into outputs, but in uh, this Xlang, C Sharpish language, you have to actually convert to string before you pass the value of X there. So let's build again and see if that error goes away. So now we have two errors. It says identifier ABC does not exist, and it says cannot find symbol ABC. And again, line 300. So when you click on that, it doesn't really do much of anything. So it's a very misleading error. And what the problem is, is when you give a string a value, you do have to put it inside of quotes here. So now if I do a build, we have zero errors. And so the point of that story was uh, you need to put your string value, initial values over here in double quotes if it's a string. So on the disk here, I have created a trace file. And I want to copy that into here. And remember, this is sort of C sharpish. So I think I can put the et sign there because um, otherwise it's going to interpret the backslash as an escape character. So let's just double check that and do a build. And that's successful. Okay, so now there's a couple places in my program I might want to add similar debug statements. So I'm going to copy, actually I don't need the PO number here. This is just uh, calling this function. And this is not enterprise level by the way. I've actually done this in some programs and then when we we started running a high level, high volume, and multiple orchestrations at the same time. It's not a smart idea to write to the file system because this is a kind of single threads to this file. So only use this technique when you have a small test orchestration you're working with. Um, in the real world, what I would do is I would write a similar routine here and I'd write it to an SQL database. And we might do that in one of the upcoming videos. So I'm going to put my debug there, and if I catch an exception, I might want to put a debug here and say uh, something like uh, ex dot to string. Maybe put here a uh, caught exception equals. And so we're actually sending the exception to the trace file. And then down here we could add an expression box. And this time we'll say this is the over 1000 branch. So we'll say here uh, PO over 1000. And then we'll copy that, put it on the right side, and we'll say PO under 1000. Now, what if it's exactly equal 1000? That would be over here too. So under, let's just put here less than or equal to. 
Now, another trick that I've discovered a while back is once you start having a bunch of traces like this, how do you know where in your program the trace came from? So this is my own little technique I've developed over several years. I mean, it's, it's kind of simple and obvious, but uh, I haven't seen a lot of people doing it. I'll put here something like trace, and I'll number by probably thousands. And so inside here, I'll put something like TRC2000, and that means trace number 2000. And then this one, I'll call it trace 2100 or 3000 or something like that. And then right here, I'll put TRC2100. And I'll do the same thing on every single trace. Now, if I'm following that technique, actually, I would never put the trace in the same piece of code where the logic is. So I would actually take the trace out of here, insert a new expression shape, and put it here. And then here I'll put like TRC 1500. And then again here, trace 1500. And then we'll do it again here in the exception as well. Insert another shape called expression. And we'll call that 1600. You want to leave enough gap between the trace numbers so that in the future when you add new shapes, you don't have to renumber everything. Um, the next trick we'll do in the same orchestration is, what if I need to dump out my entire message to my trace? So let's copy the trace up here. And we talked about calling C# -sharp programs, but we can also use the the system libraries that come with .NET, and this is a very common practice. So here, I'll create a variable called XML doc and it's going to be a .NET class instead of a string or a boolean. So that's going to pop up this, wing, this screen and I go to System XML and we're looking for XML document which is right here. And so now I can take that and put it in this trace shape and I can say XML doc. Now you still have to instantiate it just like you would any other program. So equals system.xml.xml document. Okay, because if you don't instantiate it, you'll still get like object reference, uh, null variable, whatever it is when you don't instantiate your variables. And now this is the nice thing you can do. You can say XML doc equals a message. So you can basically transfer messages to and from system XML documents because the message coming into your program is in fact an XML document. And so C sharp or I mean Xlang basically here knows that those two are compatible and it moves the message from here into XML doc. And then here we'll do trace 1000. And what we'll say is um, received standard PO equals and then we'll put XML doc dot outer XML. So in effect what we're doing here is we're printing the entire XML that we're receiving into this orchestration into my own little trace file here. And that should be trace 1000 at the top. So we have trace, two traces down here, a trace in the catch, a trace inside the scope, and the first trace in the program indicates that we receive this document and what it is. And then just another practice I have is at the very bottom, I like to have a final trace, which I'll call something like 9999, which is always the final trace of the program. And I'll say orchestration ended.